If you're considering a visit to Rocky Mountain National Park during the month of September, then stay tuned. In this video, I'll fill you in on what you can expect in terms of weather, crowds, wildlife, autumn colors, and more. Hi everyone, I'm Eric Stensland, an author and professional nature photographer based in Estes Park, Colorado, right on the eastern edge of Rocky Mountain National Park. I've spent the last 20 years photographing and writing about this incredible park. And on this channel, I share with you insights that I hope are going to help you have the best visit possible. Today, I'll be talking about the month of September. This is one of the most beautiful and dramatic months of the entire year. So many changes are taking place in the park during September that I often wish I had a way to stop time to more fully enjoy its beauty. Before I talk about the details, let me give you a quick visual tour of September in Rocky Mountain National Park. As you've seen from the photos, September can be a very, very pretty month with changing tundra, colorful aspen leaves, bugling elk. You know, it really is one of my favorite times of year. Well, let's begin by looking at the normal weather pattern for September. Now, I should say up front that the weather here in Colorado seems to enjoy defying our expectations. So be aware that what I'm about to say is the normal pattern when looked at over many years, but the weather can always do something unexpected and probably will. So generally, September is a delightful month. During the early part of the month, the days can be warm and the evenings cool. As a general rule, the intense thunderstorms of June, July, and August are gone, allowing time to hike up high into the mountains. There may be some rainy days, but often many clear and sunny days as well. Now, as the month progresses, there are usually more cool days, so be sure to bring some warmer clothing. 
The cooling is especially felt in the high country. In the tundra, the temperatures will begin to drop below freezing at night, and even during the day, it can be very cold and windy up high, especially as we get later in the month. If you plan on spending any time in the tundra, bring a very warm windproof jacket, a windproof hat, and warm gloves. Once in a while, we get a small snowfall during September, but these usually only impact the high country. Although once in a while, a snowstorm may affect the lower elevations as well. Now, one thing to be aware of, if you're crossing from one side of the park to the other during the month of September, be sure and check the weather forecast before you head out. If the weather deteriorates up high with snow or ice and you happen to be in Grand Lake and need to get back to Estes Park, you may be surprised when the National Park Service closes Trail Ridge Road and Old Fall River Road waiting for conditions to improve. If that happens, that might mean you have to make a three hour detour to get back. So keep an eye on the weather. As long as the weather is good, these roads will remain open until sometime in October. When people mention September in Rocky Mountain National Park, one of the first pictures to come to mind, at least for me, is that of gold and aspen leaves. So let me tell you about the general pattern for autumn colors in Rocky Mountain National Park. It begins at the highest elevations of the park, and it slowly makes its way downward to the lowest meadows over the course of about five weeks. Because of this, there is no one week of the autumn that you can visit and find autumn colors everywhere. One elevation is going to reach its most vibrant colors and then over the course of several days to a week, that color will fade and it will go into a wintry state, kind of brown. Then the next elevation below it is going to go through that same process, reaching its peak vibrant colors and then quickly fading. What this does mean is that fortunately, every week of September, you should be able to find autumn colors somewhere in the park. Now, in late August, the alpine tundra begins the whole process. It begins to change from its summer greens into hues of orange, red, and brown. Then, during the first week of September, there are going to be many places where you can enjoy autumn in the tundra. Now, true, it may not be as spectacular as the colorful aspen, but it is still gorgeous. If you can, get out onto one of the trails up high and notice the ta changes taking place in the tundra vegetation. You can see it on the hillsides in the distance, and then it's fascinating to get down on your hands and knees and see all the detail up close. It really is amazing. The beauty of autumn in the tundra is so often overlooked. Don't be one of those who overlooks it. Also, during this first week of September, you probably spot a few aspen trees here and there at the highest elevations that have already put out their autumn colors. They're the heralds of the vibrant show that is about to take place. Now, around the second week of September, many of the aspen leaves in the highest elevation will begin to change, displaying brilliant yellows, oranges, and even the occasional red. Some years, they can be so vibrant that it is hard to believe they're even real. And other years, they may be a little bit more dull, but still beautiful. And you never quite know what you're going to get until it happens. So during the second week of September, you're going to be seeing these bright aspen colors up near tree line. Some good places to see them initially during that second week of September is looking up at Twin Sisters or Estes Cone from Highway 7. You might see a huge patch up above Hidden Valley, which is off of Trail Ridge Road. Uh, there are also some areas up above the uh, Kawanichi Valley can be seen usually from Farview Turn on uh, Trail Ridge Road. Those will be some of the first places you may notice color during that second week. Now, by the third week of September, the changing aspen leaves have often and made their way down to Bear Lake and some of the other locations at about that elevation. In fact, during that third week, you'll probably start to notice changing leaves all over the park from Grand Lake to Wild Basin. It's a great time of year to get out and enjoy the autumn colors. Well, by the fourth week of the month, the autumn colors will be in full swing. Some of the best colors of the year are going to be found at, during this time. And I would look especially in the upper portions of Bear Lake Road, 
along Highway 7, and also around the town of Grand Lake. During the following week, which is the first week of October, you're most likely to find autumn colors finally down in the lower meadows of the park. So, as I said, generally the best colors in each area last just a few days or occasionally up to a week. Exactly when each elevation is going to reach peak and how long it's going to stay at peak is really going to vary from year to year and it's hard to predict. It depends a lot on the wind and the temperature. If we get a really strong wind or an icy cold night, that can quickly bring autumn colors to a rapid end. So if you see autumn colors, savor them. They may not be there tomorrow. Now the other big event during the month of September is the elk rut, which is the elk mating season. At the beginning of the month, the elk begin to make their way down to the lower elevations of the park. They tend to gather in the large meadows such as Moraine Park, Beaver Meadows, Horseshoe Park, Hollowell Park, Estes Park, and the Kawanichi Valley. By mid-September, the large bulls are beginning to build harems of female elk to mate with, and you'll see them out there sparring with their rivals for dominance. You can hear their haunting bugles echoing through the valley. Now these elk are most active during the season, during the early mornings and during the evenings. They put on quite the show, and so the roads are often lined with visitors who spend hours watching them. Be sure to bring a pair of binoculars and a camping chair to sit and watch them in the distance. Now, please be aware these meadows are closed during the mornings and evenings to allow the elk space, so plan on staying next to the road. Also, keep your distance. Two bus lengths is what the National Park Service recommends. If the elk come towards you, move out of the way and give them space. Realize that the bull elk aren't thinking very clearly at this testosterone filled time of year and they can be very dangerous. So stand back, move out of the way, they'll be happy, you'll be happy. In terms of park visitation, the first half of September is fairly busy but not overwhelming as neither the autumn colors nor the elk rut have really gotten underway. However, the second half of September and early October are the busiest times of the entire year. Expect large crowds at the entrance stations, on the roads, around the meadows, and especially in the Bear Lake Corridor. If at all possible, avoid visiting during the weekends during this busy period. These days are so busy that it can truly be overwhelming. If you are visiting in late September or early October, please be sure to pack some extra patience and grace in your suitcase. Now September is a great time for all the outdoor activities that Rocky Mountain National Park has to offer, from hiking to climbing, fishing, wildlife watching, backpacking, camping, and all the other wonderful outdoor activities. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the dangerous thunderstorms are gone, making this a great time to do some of those longer hikes or tundra hikes. Just be sure to check the weather forecast before you head out, because mountain weather can sometimes do the unexpected. Another reason to consider doing some longer hikes at this time of year is because generally the trails are a bit quieter. Most people are busy enjoying the autumn colors and the elk rut, which are all happening at lower elevations. So jump on a long trail and you'll usually find a bit of peace and solitude during this crazy busy time of year. Now there are a couple of other things to be aware of when visiting in September. Firstly, a timed entry permit will be required to enter the park during peak hours during this time of year. This permit is in addition to your park pass. The permit needs to be reserved online in advance. If you look down below in the notes of this video, you'll find a link to an article on my website with all of the ins and outs of the park permit system. Secondly, as I mentioned, starting in mid-September, you should expect significant crowds at entrance station, parking areas, trailheads, and popular destinations. So, arrive either very early or late in the day to avoid the worst of the crowds. You can also avoid the crowds by staying away from the major meadows or aspen viewing areas. Also another note for September of 2023, you should be aware that the Fall River Entrance Station is currently undergoing a major upgrade and so the National Park Service is recommending that visitors enter via the Beaver Meadows Entrance Station. 
Be aware also that there is significant road work taking place in downtown Estes Park as they restructure the road system to address the congestion issues. This construction will last through 2024. So give yourself extra time to get to the park entrance. Well, that's a quick look at the month of September. Thanks everyone for watching and uh, be well and I'll see you soon. If you would like to learn more about Rocky Mountain National Park, visit my website, RockyMountainNationalPark.com. For my books and calendar, visit RockyTrailPress.com. And if you're visiting Estes Park, Colorado, be sure and stop in my gallery, Images of RMNP.